Hello and welcome to the forest. Today I'm out here shooting with the Canon 5D, a quite uh, legendary camera, at least if you listen to what people write on the internet. And well, it did have a quite big impact when it was released in 2005. Of course, the question today is if it's good enough to be using in the year 2024. Well, at least if you look at the specifications, it does have a lot of potential. It uses a 12 megapixel or 12.8 megapixel CMOS sensor in full frame format. And this was quite a big deal at the time when it was released because there wasn't that many cameras available with the full 35 mm size sensor. This was very important, of course, because it meant that you could use the same lenses that you were using for 35 mm film cameras and have them show the same perspective. So no cropping or such things needed to be taken into consideration when using lenses. The Canon EF lens mount is very nice because you have a lot of lenses available for it, both from Canon and from third-party manufacturers. And also these lenses can sometimes be found quite cheap, so that's very nice. The EF mount is also great for adapting lenses from other manufacturers, preferably ones with manual focus and manual aperture. Its design is very similar to the Canon 20D and 30D. It's slightly bigger and heavier, and also it has uh, no pop-up flash. I really like the Canon layout with the big wheel in the back for changing settings, and the small wheel here on the top. Also you have these uh, buttons with uh, which you can select uh, which uh, setting to change. It's very easy to access and yeah, it has two functions, so one different function per wheel. And on the back there is a joystick for more easy navigation of, uh, for example, the autofocus points. And regarding autofocus points, there are a few ones. doesn't have as many as modern cameras, but there is still a selection so you can select, uh, let's say, focus on different areas of the image. The screen could be a bit better. It has a slightly green tint, but this is an issue more with the earlier models of the 5D. The later ones has a better screen with uh, better color reproduction. But still, it's, uh, I think, good enough for viewing the photos, like viewing the exposure and the colors. About the viewfinder, there I don't find anything to complain about really. It's very big and bright. And even though I don't have the special focusing screen for manual focus lenses, I was able to manual focus quite, uh, quite well with the lenses I used. Now, one problem with the 5D is that, uh, or at least with the early models, is that the mirror can come loose. On this camera it has been fixed, so it's uh, something to look out for when shopping for this. Well, in any case, so let's uh, listen to the shutter when I have it open. Of course, you should not uh, fire the camera with the, without the lens outside, but I don't know, it's for demonstration purposes. But yeah, it does uh, write rather quickly to the memory as well. Like, comes up rather fast to photos. Fast enough to not cause any problems when shooting. So overall it's a very, let's say, modern camera design. I haven't found anything weird on it. It's quite standardized and comparable to later Canon models as well. One thing to mention, of course, is that there is no video mode on it. For that you need to have the Canon 5D Mark II. And for storage, well, it uses compact flash cards and it does accept bigger cards than 2 gigabytes. So yeah, what about the image quality? Well, first uh, I was shooting both RAW and JPEG, but I quickly switch to only RAW because yeah I like shooting RAW more on the camera but uh, still I would say that the JPEG files are quite nice straight out of the camera with only the standard settings. I've been using a few different lenses on this camera and let's start with the one I have mounted the 28 to 90 millimeter lens which is originally a kit lens from a Rebel series camera a film Rebel probably one of the cheapest if not the cheapest lens you can get for this camera so in other words it's nothing special but still I would not underestimate it. Of course you shouldn't expect too much from it either. But as I let's say everyday lens for it, it is, uh, it is okay. I mean the photo quality is not too bad or anything. This lens does of course have a lot of technical imperfections like uh, distortion, soft corners and lens flares. But it's not such a big deal if you don't have too high expectations of the lens. It's a super cheap and light lens so for this camera it can be a good starting point if you don't have any other lenses, that is. So let's continue with uh, this lens here. It's a Sigma, uh, let's see now, the full name of the lens. It's a Sigma 70 to 300 millimeter APO-DG. And well, this is a budget lens. And I never really liked this lens. I have used it a lot on the Canon EOS 400D. While the lens sort of does the job and the technical image quality is okay, the focus and the usability has not been so good on the 400D when I've used it. Sometimes you can get quite surprised though. I went and did some bird photography with the 5D and 
it turned out this lens doesn't really have any focusing issues with the 5D, it focuses quite well. So it seems like the problem was the 400D or the focus system on that camera. On the 5D I had no problem tracking and focusing on birds, so yeah, <laughs> it changed my opinion of this lens quite a lot. Still of course there are downsides to this lens. At the 300 mm it's not really that sharp anymore and even though the sensor is like only 12 megapixels it's kind of soft. So this lens is best at uh, 200 mm and below. Many of my shots uh, did end up blurry but I would say that is user error. I don't have so much experience uh, shooting birds in flight or birds in general. Now still for this type of shots I would actually recommend a lens with a stabilizer. It would make your life a bit easier I think. But I mean of course you can still use this lens and get usable shots. For landscape shots the camera lens combination is quite good. At least if you don't go above the 200 millimeter. So yeah it can be quite good for landscapes as well. Let's continue with some of the adapted lenses. This is a Helios 28mm 2.8 auto wide. And this is, uh, well, a Soviet era lens, but it's not made in the Soviet Union. It's actually made in Japan. So it seems like they outsourced uh, some of the lens production to Japan. It's quite interesting lens. I have no idea who actually made it, but it's made by some or one of the Japanese lens manufacturers. Now, despite being made in Japan, the image quality does not correspond what you would expect from a lens made in Japan. It has very unsharp corners, uh, uneven sharpness, insane lens flares, I guess because of very limited lens coatings. Also very heavy chromatic aberrations, but that is expected from a lens designed for film. The build quality is actually okay, it's quite solid. And it does smell of uh, machine oil, just like Soviet lenses usually do, even though it's not made in the Soviet Union. So despite the image quality being, well, total garbage, I actually do enjoy using this lens because it does provide a very unique perspective. You get very interesting looking photos from it. Of course, this is not suitable for every situation, but for some type of photos where you want more an experimental look, it can be quite fun. Let's continue with another M42 lens. This is a Jupiter 11A and this lens was actually made in the Soviet Union. And I think it is based on a pre-war German cult size sonar design. So in other words, it's not as crazy as the 28 mm lens. And in general, the telephoto lenses are, let's say, more of more controlled quality because they're a bit easier to make. Also, this lens has some lens coating. There's a slight purple shift in it. So it should help with flares. Still, I have this quite big uh, lens hood for it. And I usually put it on also. Quite nice sturdy lens hood. And well, mounted onto the Canon 5D. Well, it does look kind of funny. Because it's like this long, narrow lens. It does look a bit weird. The lens is very practical to use. The aperture is changed here on the front. And it's fortunately not stiff on this lens because it's quite common on Soviet era lenses that the lubrication dries up and it becomes stiff. What about the image quality of this lens camera combination? Well, the image quality is quite good, I would say. Don't have anything to complain about. Very nice lens for this camera. So this sort of became more of a lens review video maybe. So let's stop with the lenses for now. And yeah, my first impression of the Canon 5D is very good. It's still a very nice camera in the year 2024. I mean, one limitation is that you don't have any video mode, but it's not really so important. I really do like cameras that only have the photo mode because you can concentrate more on the on taking pictures and also the interfaces are a bit more, let's say, minimalist. You don't have as many features. I also want to try it with a bit better Canon lenses because I don't think I have seen what it's fully capable of quite yet. I'm not entirely sure what lens I should get. I mean, I do like wide-angle lenses, but... Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of, quite a big selection and I'm not entirely sure which one is the right one for me. But I will search a bit more and of course if you have any suggestions you can always write in the comments. Which is your favorite Canon EF uh, lens for the 5D. But yeah, I think uh, this is all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!